Hey guys, Nerdsing here, and in this video, I'd like to share five productivity tips I use on my Mac. These five tips are just a few of the main features and apps I use on Mac. I hope to share all my productivity tips all in good time so that you can make better use of your Mac to get your work done quicker and more efficiently. Let's get started. First up, and in no particular order, Hot Corners. Even though Hot Corners is an inbuilt feature that's been available for several years, I don't see many Mac users use this. You can access the settings for Hot Corners by going to System Preferences, Mission Control, and Hot Corners. Hot Corners allows you to customize what happens when you move your cursor to any of the four corners of your screen. Over the years, I've tried many variations and I'm most productive with this setup having desktop for the bottom left and right corners. What this does is when I move my cursor to either of the bottom corners, it moves whatever windows I have open out the way so I can see the desktop. Then if I move my cursor back into any of those corners, it puts everything back how it was. This allows me to super quickly see what's on my desktop without having to press any shortcut or having to minimize anything. This makes it so quick to preview, or open a file, to move a file, or even delete it. Let me give you one example. I have this file on my desktop and I want to put it onto my hard drive. So as you do, you'd plug in your hard drive and locate to the folder you want to transfer the file to. I've got my hard drive open here and I want to move my file into this folder. So normally without this feature, you'd probably either open a new finder window, then locate to the desktop, then find the file and drag it over. Or you might open a new tab by pressing Command T and do the same kind of thing, right? With these hot corners, all I've got to do is with this finder window open where I want to move the file to, I'll move the cursor to one of the corners, click on the file and drag. I'll drag the file to one of the corners to bring all my active windows to the front again and drag it over Finder and let it go. As simple as this functionality is, it's got to be one of my favorite features on macOS. Next up, Auto Hide Dock. Now, as you can see, I have the dock hidden and this is only something I've chosen to do quite recently because I found that even though it didn't take that long for it to pop up, there was a tiny lag from dragging the cursor to the bottom of the dock for it to appear. And I found out that it's not for a lack of computer speed or anything, it's actually built into the operating system for there to be a small lag, and there's a way to change it. So let's do that. If I go to Spotlight Search by pressing Command and Space, and I'll type in Terminal, and press Enter to open it. Now, if I type in this code, I'll leave a copy of this in the description. This code is going to change the time it takes for the dock to launch when you move your cursor over it to zero, i.e. straight away. So I'll press enter to lock that in and then I'll reset the dock by typing in kill all dock. I'll hit enter and we're done. I'm glad I found this code because it allows me to take full advantage of as much space as possible on the screen especially for when I'm working on my MacBook Pro with less real estate to work with. Next up, Spectacle. This is a free app that gives you the Snap Assist functionality which Microsoft Windows comes with as a default. I used to use Better Snap Tool for many years as it had the similar kind of animation where you click and drag a window to the edge of the screen and it would resize, but ultimately it was too slow for me. Spectacle works best with shortcuts I've got it running in the background, so if I press Command Option and then the left or right key, I can quickly resize and move my active window to take up half of the screen, either on the left or the right. You can also press the up and down key too, like so. The best thing is it's instant. If I press Command Option and F now, then it will make the window full screen. If you have a dual or triple monitor setup, and you want to send your active window to another screen, just press Command, Option, and Control, and then left or right, whatever way you want to send it, and it will move it over. It's great. You can download Spectacle on the website spectacleapp.com. It's an easy install. The only one thing is that you have to give it accessibility permissions, which the installation process takes you through. It's just a tick of a box. 
Once you're installed, the app sits in the toolbar above and you can see all the commands and shortcuts that you can use with Spectacle. You can also, by clicking on Preferences, set it to open at login so it always runs in the background. Next up, Automator, which is an app made by Apple and it's also pre-installed. I'll open it up by going to Spotlight by using the shortcut command space, then typing in Automator. Automator does what its name says really, automate tasks, in the name of saving time and increasing productivity. The idea of automation works such that you tell your automation workflow to carry out a series of steps, one after the other, to complete your required goal. This is a topic in itself and I plan to cover this in another video in the future. For this video, I'd like to show you one simple workflow I created using Automator, which I use a lot to save time. This workflow takes all the files inside a folder and allows me to add some text after each file. This saves me having to rename each file and copying and pasting the desired text. I personally use this for when I upload music to SoundCloud and need to include the event location and date to the end of each audio file. So I'll open up my Automator file, which is on my desktop. Let me take you through what's happening here. So by using the Files Folders section of Automator, I've strung together a number of actions to take place by dragging certain commands into the timeline. From top to bottom, in order, this is what happens. First, the workflow will get the finder items, and here I need to choose which folder to point to. I'll do this by clicking on add, and then locating to the folder I want to change all the file names inside to. Then, Automator is going to get all the contents in that folder I've selected above. Then, it's going to copy those finder items into the SC folder, short for SoundCloud, which is located on my desktop. I'll show you that quickly by moving my cursor to one of the corners and allowing the desktop to appear. Woo, there it is! Finally, Automator is going to rename the files by adding the text I input into this text box. And I've chosen here that I want to add the text after whatever it's currently named. So I've chosen what I want to add after. And all I have to do now is press the run button at the top and Automator will follow through these steps one by one and do it all in one go. Let's have a look at the SC folder and the original folder and compare them. It took all of the files from this folder on the left, copied them into this SC folder on the right and added the text afterwards. Perfect. This simple automation saves me so much time and you can do all sorts of clever things with this app. For example, you can make use of the calendar to automate your automations. Like you could have a folder automatically copy itself as a backup on a certain day of the week. The possibilities are really endless. Last but not least is a simple but very useful app called Caffeine. I'll leave a link in the description where you can download it. Once installed, it sits at the top as this little coffee cup. At the moment, in light grey, and in this state, it's inactive. When I click on it, it goes dark to show that it's active. When it's on, all this app does is override your energy saver and battery settings to basically force your computer to stay switched on as small a feature as this may seem, it's hugely useful for say when you're downloading a large file and you don't want your computer to go to sleep or switch off. Or say if you're rendering out a video, that's what I mainly use it for. So you can leave your computer and know it won't switch off. And then when you're done, just click this button and your settings will revert to their usual. So this means you don't need to mess around with your energy saver settings every time you want to force your Mac not to switch off. If you enjoyed and benefited from these five tips, be sure to share this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time for more Nerdsing Out.